in this episode dress code to eat what are your thoughts and on the flip side we talk about one of the most traumatic things that can happen to you as a child and are we afraid that hawk tua is going to talk to you and take our listeners tune in to find out mike hit the music What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Welcome back to the Funny Business Podcast, everybody. Hope you're doing fan flipping tastic because we are. Uh, it is a beautiful day, hopefully, wherever you are, however you may be listening. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, if it's your first time, welcome. If you're a returning listener, I'm shocked, but thank you. Uh, Mike, how are you? How are things? Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. It's the sound of the police. The sound that it, your first time listener, but that's okay. We'll give you, let you off on the warning. It's fine by us. I'm great. I'm ready to do another episode with my best friend, Matt. I was on a cleaning spree the last two days. Ooh, nice. And it, it, like my closet, uh, my second closet out of my 20, because you know, $10,000 an episode. Talk about that later. Uh, my closet is cleaned out, everything is organized. I feel like I don't know. I feel like a new man. I look around this room and I'm like, is this the room that I was in last week? Nope. But here we are. Yeah, no. Uh, cleaning cleaning moods are very, uh, they come in swings. Like you'll get, you'll get in a, a cleaning mode. Yep. Uh, but man, there's nothing better. When everything's like nice and tidy, every room is great, or your desk or whatever it may be, your car. I had to clean my car for this past weekend. I'll get into that later. Um, that was so satisfying. Um, and it also just makes you wonder why, why don't we always just keep everything so clean? It's because we're human. Well, yeah, that, that's probably part of it. We're human. We're in our own conscience and it is what it is. But speaking of humans, Matt, humans do make mistakes. Sometimes. And today we're going to decide if this uh, restaurant in Greensboro, North Carolina has made a mistake or not. So Kim's Cafe and Ironically enough, playing with the alliteration, cafe is spelled with a K. That's strike one. (laughs) Nice. Uh, They posted a very strict dress code on Facebook, which we wouldn't be just sharing just a basic dress dress code if it wasn't strict, but um, we also wouldn't be sharing it if it was creating some backlash. Uh, So, Matt, did you take the time to read the dress code for this restaurant? I did. I'm going to pull it back up quick. Um, it was, what's the word? Well, I'm not going to say the word that I said it was when I texted you. Um, it was eye-opening, to say the yeah. least. Yeah. So while Matt is pulling it up, there there is a dress code, and there is a recommendation, and there are suggestions. Um, not that I want to put our generation, the millennial generation, I think we are very aware, but we're always the one to ask, you know, how do I dress? or how should I dress? But Matt, I wanted to see if you wanted to read the dress code. Uh, yes, I would love to. Okay, go um, ahead. I am, before I read, I am always someone if I go like somewhere new or like in a, an event that I've never been to or something like that. I always ask what the dress code is. You just want to make sure you're you know, going to look up the par. Uh, not maybe just for the place standards, but also like everyone around you, I guess. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the dress code says, this dress code has been in place all summer. All we ask is that people respect our dress code as they do everyone else's business. The, by the way, the grammar in this post is terrible. <laughs> uh, then it says, God is blessing this business. Thank you. Oh. Uh, people are not leaving anything for the imagination much nowadays, so our dress code is strict. Kim Cafe's dress code stands. No shorts. <gasps> no crop tops. <gasps> no leggings. Oh. No T-straps. What? No white T-shirts. Excuse me? No short skirts, (gasps) no, quote, skimpy clothing of any kind, Uh oh, and no cleavage showing. Well, damn. That is the dress code. That is the dress code. Matt, reactions, first thoughts, that besides the the text that you sent me. Uh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, what do you want people to wear? They can't wear shorts. They can't wear leggings. Right right away, that knocks out, uh, let's piss off a lot of females. Or guys, if they were leggings, I guess. I, I I wonder if that includes like joggers. They didn't say joggers. Potentially. My my big thing is like, I, I understand having a dress code. This is a little too much, especially the, the part that really 
grinds my gear is the skimpy clothing of any kind because you don't know what they're going to say is acceptable right. or not. Like that is that does not define anything. That's just you judging how people look. And you know what's very interesting, Matt, when you were listing all of these bands? Not that we want to identify, but where do you think more of these bands come from? Where do they come from? Like the no, sh- no shorts, crop tops, leggings, T-straps, white T-shirts or short skirts. Oh, yeah, that's right to the to ladies. Right to the ladies. Yeah. So what the public backlash is going for is they're actually making comparisons to The Handmaid's Tale. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so... With it, they, as you were reading the Facebook post, Matt, so obviously the post garnered over 12,000 reactions, about 9,000 comments, uh, with obviously many comparing to The Handmaid's Tale. And one quote from the Facebook post was, I literally have to buy clothes to go to your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it it really is. I mean, they're like narrowing down almost everything that you can wear. And it's, it's absolutely ridiculous, especially for a cafe. What also, too... I think I've I've found like a little not disturbing, but just a little unique here is that this is North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So not that I'm that I've spent a lot of time in North Carolina, but I believe it's a little warmer. Like when you start in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, like things typically stay warm. Correct. I would say so. Yeah. Especially like if this place is like near the coast, it's hot and people are coming off the beach or coming off a, a lake. Yeah, it's it's very sketchy for sure. I uh, to be honest, if I walked into a place and saw that dress co- like that specific of a dress code, even if it doesn't affect me or anyone I'm with, I really don't want to eat there or drink there. Mm-hmm. Basically, the idea that you're having a very strict dress code. Now, of course, like people are asking a legal perspective, like, is this illegal? Um, so they actually brought in an attorney to explain it. Um, so this was reported by New York Post. Uh, attorney David Daggett explained the dress code is legal as long as it's not discriminatory and applies to all patrons. But then as we are talking about it, like it specifically addresses the ladies of the group. Now, mm-hmm. if you wear a crop top and, and are male or, or you know, you, you have a neutral gender, like, it, it, I, I'm not judging, but at the same time, like you are not allowed to be in this place, but primarily speaking, it is focused on the females. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very discri- discriminatory. So what do you think, Matt? Too strict? Justified? Uh, oh, w- way too strict. Um, and it is discriminatory. I think just uh, not even male or female, but they're they're essentially just like body shaming people in, in a way, uh, saying no skimpy. Like the, the word skimpy, you can't find that really... Uh, like everybody has their own version of what is skimpy or not. So right. it's all, it's almost like they have like a bouncer outside being like, no, you can come in. You can come in. You can't. Sorry. That's too revealing. Like that's that's bullshit. Yeah. I mean, I got to look at the list again. Really, I guess the white T-shirts can apply to basically anyone. And I guess this, all these apply to anybody, mm-hmm. um, which, by the way, to say no white T-shirts, they uh, they're crossing a fine line, calling it Kim's Cafe. Two K's getting, getting a little fine line there. But back to the serious side, uh, yeah, way too much. Uh, if I see this, uh, I, I would like to announce I'm never going to Kim's Cafe. <laughs> yep. You ready for first breaking news. Putting that out there. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to personally disavow Kim's Cafe. God. Yep. So Kim's Cafe, Hitler, sexism, sexism racism, racism, Kim's Cafe. <laughs> uh, <and> Kim's Cafe. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Pretty much. There it is. I can understand an expect i i can understand an expectation rather than a dress code like yeah if it was this fancy schmancy restaurant like hey, you don't want people in like a skimpy crop top like completely understand but it is more of a suggestion and it is more of a recommendation than it is a dress code like mm-hmm. restaurants are having it tough I mean, all businesses are having it tough, but specifically restaurants. Restaurants are having it tough. Why would you turn away a patron to eat or dine at your place or, I don't know, a cafe? I didn't really look at the menu. Why would you turn away a patron just simply based on what they're wearing? Yeah, it's 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 total bullshit. If they really wanted to do it, just go like business casual. Right. Or like fine dining casual or whatever kind of casual you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you start picking the nitty gritty stuff, that's when people start getting annoyed. That's where you start crossing the line. And that's where it does get discriminatory. Like if they would have just said business casual, sure. I, nobody's talking about this, right. but you went out of your way to make this stupid 
specific dress code, you got to deal with the heat. Have you ever been in a situation before where, I don't want to say more dress code, but more so a, a dress story that you had? Um, not that it was a dress code, but um, I've seen on like TikTok that people in like Disney World wear like something like inappropriate and people catch them and they're like, here, you need to like wear this shirt instead because this mm-hmm. is not this is not what we want. Yeah, I think also in Disney, if you dress up like a character, they also like tell you to change like because they don't want other people thinking that that's like an actual Disney right princess or whatever. I, I Yeah, that that's strange, too. I can't really think of any off off the top of my head. The other well, this past weekend, and I'll get into my past weekend later in the show. But we went out to uh, Hibachi, and everyone didn't really know like how the vibe was or like what to wear. So that was kind of kind of interesting. Yeah, uh, just trying to decide like is is this nice enough to go out, and then you know do we need to look a lot nicer and uh, all that stuff. It's it's a uh, it could be a hard or not a hard conversation, but a uh, a tricky subject sometimes. I guess. What yeah, about you? I- I've had, I've not had more recommendations, but it was more just trying to figure out what to wear. And I think Matt, you and I have that complex all the time when it comes to like networking events or events in general. It's kind of like, well, what, what do I really wear? And in many cases, I've either defaulted to a navy suit or a black suit. And mm-hmm. usually I had um, a tie that came along with it or no tie. Like, that's the thing. Like, you can interchange it to those degrees. Like, as long as it is, that is usually not out of the question, but it's in those lower categories where it's like, okay, like, you should wear jeans and maybe a button down or maybe you should wear jeans and a nice t-shirt. Like, that's where those things get a little messy. And, but I think ultimately it's always the first question is like, what do I wear? What do I wear to this event? And Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like if I'm on vacation or if I'm somewhere and I want to go to this restaurant, I don't like I don't really want to sit there and be like, OK, well, I'm, I don't follow the dress code. Like, I'd rather just go to another restaurant for ease of ease of accessibility. Yeah, no, if I'm on vacation and see this immediately turning right around. Yep. Immediately. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I've seen that happen a lot of conversations with guys at weddings. Like not knowing like if they should or even want to like wear the jacket or even wear a tie, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of weird because like years ago I would think wedding is like a suit thing, but now like weddings are coming a lot more casual. You will wear like, a suit. I'm, I'm wearing a birthday suit to your wedding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Assless chaps. Who who gave me the advice? Don't do a bow tie. I think it was Mark. Mark was like, don't do a bow tie. I'm like, I cannot stand bow ties. To save yeah, my life, so. no, I, I also don't like bow ties. Very overrated. Yeah. Uh, overrated. Um, so, Matt, I want to put you in a situation here. Yep. Think of like the best restaurant you've went to, like, period. Chili's. Uh, OK. <laughs> is that is, is, is that your final answer? <laughs> uh, no. OK, I'm thinking. OK. Think of that restaurant mm-hmm. now, like times, like the quality, the service, the food, like times that by like 10. Okay. That is Kim's cafe with this trick dress code. Yeah. Would you consider? Consider going and, and following, following the dress, dress code? code? No. Really? No, no, I wouldn't. Nope. I don't think any, I was going to say any place, any restaurant is really worth that big of a dress code because mm-hmm. at the end of the day like what if i spill something and i get my nice clothes like ruined like that's not cool i'm gonna be pissed not at the re- well i'm gonna be pissed at the restaurant if they make me wear it and also pissed at myself because just fat and spilling um but yeah no i'm not gonna be forced into dressing a certain way just to go eat food when i can go in shorts and a t-shirt and drive up to the raising canes drive through and, and get food so fun fact um, so at the time of this recording, I decided to look. The one thing I wanted to look was the reviews. Mm-hmm. So I go to Yelp. I've never had this happen to me before for Yelp. And a pop-up window is up and it says unusual activity alert. Oh, it no. says this business recently received increased public attention, which often means people come to the page to post reviews on the news. While we don't take a stand one way or the other when it comes to this incident, We've temporarily disabled the posting of content of this page as we work to investigate whether the content you see here reflects actual consumer experiences rather than recent events. Wow. So what I will say is I'm looking here. So like you see the pop up, but you could still see the comments. So I'll read the first two comments. Five star rating back in August. If you want the best soul food in Greensboro, it's here. 
I get either a barbecue chicken or veggie plate just because the sides are so good, are that good. Please come, <laughs> please come and support and respect her dress code. Another one, best soul food I've had in North Carolina hands down. Service was amazing, ordered quite a few meals, so it took quite a bit of time to make it, to make and just one woman in the back cooking. She found time to come out and thank us for stopping and gave us free drinks to try. Service was wonderful. Best yams I've ever had from a soulful restaurant. Tasted like mama made them. Chicken was crunchy and seasoned perfectly. Would absolutely recommend. Well, it's a shame I'm never going to go there. <laughs> Watch. You're going to be in North Carolina for some random reason, and you will see this Kim's Cafe. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and I will think of this exact moment and be like, you know what? It's a, it's a shame. It's a real shame. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know realistically speaking like in all fairness like i hope the business does well but i hope it bees i hope it is a little bit more transparent as to why the dress code exists because it i mean kind of given those like simple examples like you said it's like all we ask that people respect our dress code as they do everyone else's business it's like well, okay let me we're, tell you, we're, lot, yeah. a lot of people don't respect other people's business right. so so there's that mm -hmm. so uh if you're in north carolina if you see this maybe let us know i don't know We'll yeah. see. Do a food review. Let us know if it's actually worth it. <laughs> Tag us. <laughs> yes. All right. We're going to slide on in to the second half of the show. Before we go to the segment, Mike, update on our guy. You know who our guy is? Quarterback. Yep. What team? <laughs> you got this. <laughs> oh, Come Jesus. on. Uh, I, I think I, it's right. I know you're about, to, you're about to say Caleb Williams quarterback yeah, for the Chicago oh Bears. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah. thinking like Caleb Smith, but like Williams, yeah. like that tip of my yep. tongue. Yep, yep. Uh, so they did win week one. Whoop, whoop. Yep. Uh, he only threw for 93 yards. Okay. Uh, but they got the win. Uh, however, people were making fun of him uh, for two things. One, still having his nails painted. Oh, my God. How long are we going to do this? Uh, the other one, maybe we can find a good spin zone because this is actually They're bad. <laughs> people have a point. Uh, when he, they drafted the punter, they, the Bears drafted a punter after him in the draft. He uh, texted him and was like, hey, like you're not going to have to like work that hard this year. And then they punted on like every drive they had. Mm. So people were, were retweeting that tweet. Maybe it was motivation mm. because mm -hmm. maybe it allowed him to work harder thinking that he wasn't going to punt more. Yeah, that spin zone. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, it made him work harder in the preseason. And then Caleb was like, oh, damn, I want people to see how good he is. Yep. So he's like, I'm going to throw my first game in the NFL. looks so bad so he can look good. So next week, he's probably going to throw for like 5,000 yards. Sounds about right. Yeah. OK, love that. Uh, all right, moving on. It's time for Down in the Dumps. All right, I'm going to go first. OK. Um, I have a decent list. Uh, first off, so like I said last week, I believe I said last week, I went on a bachelorette party this past weekend. Batch. Uh, to start with that, I also went on the batch party two days after coming home from the beach. Oh. So now I have twice the amount of suitcases to unpack because I still never oh. unpacked from the first trip. And now I'm at the point where like, I just, I can't unpack ever. And I just have to leave it and live out of suitcases for the rest of my life. Lazy sack of shit. Well, listen, I came, <laughs> I got home late. Yeah. On Wednesday, uh, I streamed a little bit on Thursday, and Thank then you. that Friday, I left Friday night, so I had oh. like one day. I had one day. Wow. Yeah, and I was carpooling with friends, so they were coming earlier on Friday, and unpacking is the worst. Yeah. It's bad. You know, it, it could be a five-day vacation, seven-day vacation. Hell, it could be even a weekend. Just bringing that bad ba bag back in the house and kind of like, ah, oh, crap, I got to put this in the laundry or got to put mm -hmm. the stuff that I didn't wear, put it away. Um, I, I could see that. I, I could understand why you're down in the dumps. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. Um, so bachelor party was great. Uh, like I said, we got massages and hibachi. Sounds like an awesome weekend. Mm. We'll do it. We we'll would do it without a bachelor party. Yeah. Uh, a few issues with the massages. Massage. Oh, the massage. <laughs> massage was great. It was phenomenal. Uh, my shoulders and back are really not good. Mm. Like she was digging, like my shoulders had so many knots. I could feel it. Like when she'd go with like her hand, her elbow, like moving back and forth. Oh, she put her elbow into it. Oh, oh. So then I rolled over oh. and she put her whole elbow on the whole length of my back. 
Oh my! And God. it was so painful <laughs> that like it felt good. Like I didn't tell her to stop. It was so painful. I was out of breath. And oh my gosh, it was terrible. But then afterwards, she was like, "You you really needed that. Like you got a lot of stuff on back there." I was like, "Well, yeah." So so now I think I need to get. Uh, go see a chiropractor or something. You could also get like a massage. More you don't regularly. have to go to a fancy spa. Well, correct. That's what this was. It's it's in a well, yeah, but like there there are people like beyond these like fancy getaway massage masseuse yeah. places. Like you, like I I know Jenna. Like she'll she'll get a massage. Like I forget what the frequency is, but it's like in a woman's home, and mm-hmm. she does it. Like, oh. I, I don't know how uh what do you call it i don't know how uh what's the word i'm looking for how uh how much trouble i just shared that she does it in her house i don't know like it's, yeah i don't know I'm if sure i'm going to a woman's deep. house to get a massage but yeah you can you can go places like it's an investment but you can go places yeah i, I think i'm gonna have to because it, it did feel really good but during it it was extremely painful so let me um, ask you this yeah saw you wearing a robe i did wear a robe yes what, what was underneath that robe uh, i doing? had my boxers on <sighs> I had my boxers on. I, so I was in a room with some of my very good friends. I'm the only guy in the room. I'm not going butt ass naked in there. Are you kidding me? Anyway, massage was great. Masseuse was very nice. We had our own private little room with like Prosecco, pastries. Yeah, it was cool. great. As I was done with my massage, come out of the room. She's walking me like back to the room, that private room we have. She stops and turns around. And she goes, hey. I don't want this to sound weird. How did you get stuck with all of these girls? <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Oh, God. So I was just like, uh, very, very good friends from college. And she was like, oh, OK. And turned around and just kept walking. <laughs> I was like, what? how nosy could you be? Are you serious? Like what? You now, should have been, like, been like, these are all my girlfriends. Like I trade off like every other week. <laughs> So we decided the the best response I should have gave was that I was the stripper. Mm. Yeah, that, that was uh, your paycheck. Yes, massage. yeah. But everybody got a big kick out of that when I got back into the room. <laughs> uh, what else do I have? Uh, you might have this one too. I don't know. Uh, I have a really good one. I'm saving last, but before I get to that, R.A.P. James Earl Jones. Yeah, I have that. Yeah. Okay, I will save that. Yeah. Um. So I my last down in the dumps was uh, backtracking all the way back to my vacation with my parents. I This is one of the most relatable things, probably the most relatable thing we will ever say on this podcast <laughs> that happened to me. So I was in the grocery store with my parents. We were picking up some things. Nice. Walked around the store. Dad went got his stuff. I stuck with mom, hit the store. We go to checkout. We're in the checkout line. We're next. There's about 15 items left to go. My mom goes, oh, I forgot this. I have to run down to that side of the store. My mom goes that way. My dad's like, I'm going to go over here and check out the pastries they have over here. Dad goes over there. So now, in every kid's worst scenario, <laughs> my parents left me in line with the cart. I am up next, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Start loading on the conveyor belt. I, but that's every kid's worst nightmare is getting left alone in the grocery checkout line. Like, I was like, I'm going to have to pay for this myself. Are you kidding me? My mom is coming. She yeah, <laughs> I almost started yelling, Mom, Dad, Mom! We're, up, we're up next. <laughs> Two minute warning. I was, I was terrified. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, they came back. Oh, in time. man. I for for as much grocery shopping as I have done since moving out of my family's house. Like, I forgot about that. Like, just the pure terror of, oh, man, like, can you just sit here and like wait in line? And then it's like, no, Mom, it's coming. We're next. Where are you? And like you're like constantly looking back to see where they're. Oh, at. I was I, I was like my head was on a swivel. I was like left and right, left and right. The worst is when you're a kid and they leave you, and then someone comes in behind and like blocks it, so like they have to like move the cart then to get in because you're like oh I'm trapped. There's no way I'm getting out of this. And then you don't know where they're coming from, and sometimes they have to like walk all the way around from like kind of the the exit lane, I should say, like leaving the store. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's only like forty five seconds they're gone for, but it's the longest forty five <laughs> seconds of your life. Oh my gosh, I missed that. That was. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's by down in the dubs. Jeez. Um. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll cover first. Like James Earl Jones passing away. Mm-hmm. 
I, Matt, I think we're we're starting to get to a point now where like we're seeing some like actors that not that we relate to, but that has been a part of our life starting to pass away. Not to sound morbid or anything, but like not in the sense of like passing away other than old age sickness or that like mm-hmm. I think we're starting to get that. Um, I, I don't rem- I remember seeing this somewhere, but as far as Darth Vader, that's I think the thing that Matt and I associate with the most with James Earl Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, he had some really good one liners in Lion King. Like, I, I didn't realize that until they made a super cut of him being, uh, oh my God, Simba? No. Mufasa. Mufasa. Jeez. Yeah. I didn't realize he was Mufasa till last night. Yeah. I had no idea. I didn't put yeah. that two and, two and two together. Um, but I'm not sure if they did this. Do not quote me on this, but I've seen it somewhere that they actually signed rights for James Earl Jones to use his voice and to like artificially use his voice so that way he could be Darth Vader regardless of whatever rendition of Star Wars that they use. I'm pretty sure that is true. Okay. I'm going to say it's a funny business science fact. Funny business science fact. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, just the one of the greatest voices we'll ever hear. Um, he was also great in Field of Dreams and Sandlot. Yeah. Yeah. Just I, I, an iconic guy all the way around. And, and one of those guys that everybody loves. Nobody hated mm-hmm. James Earl Jones. Yeah. The sports kinda- fans loved them. Nerds loved them. Everybody loved them. It was a little sad because Mark Hamill tweeted. He's like, RIP, dad. I saw that. <laughs> was, yeah. Hmm. That is tough. So, um, Matt, I'm, I'm also down in the dumps, too, because uh, how do I put this nicely? Um, remember you said like that iconic line that's like the most viewed like video on our on our Instagram? Uh, like I, which, I'd rather. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. How the f- did you forget about that? <laughs> I I don't know. But I did. I, I'm so, with you now. I don't know if you saw this. Haley Welch, the Hawk Tua girl. Yeah. Is now starting her podcast. Oh, I did not. I did not yeah. see that. <laughs> and it's called, I think, Talk Tua. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is tough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a couple weekends ago, um, my family, my mom and dad actually made it down to see Jenna's mom and dad. And they like spent the whole weekend together. It was such a fun time. And uh, we were having some garage beers. And, you know, the Kelsey brothers, like they just signed a... We're all standing downstairs in the basement and, you know, they share the news that like the Kelsey brothers, what was it? $10 million for like, yeah, something that's crazy. Amazon web services, all that stuff, AWS. And Jenna's dad goes, yeah, Mike, when is it going to be your turn? I'm like, wow. Excuse wow. Me? Wow. <laughs> yeah, Shots everybody was fired. laughing. And I was like, how do you know we don't make that now? Uh, <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. But for Matt, you being so iconic with that line, that, that could have been us. It, it it will be us. I there's still like 0.001 percent hope in the back of my brain that like, oh, we're gonna hit it big time. <laughs> we millionaires. Um, talk to her. I'm I'm totally supportive of her. Like she's using her fame appropriately. Wasn't hasn't gone wrong yet. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, she's got a podcast set up. Like she's got a team. Like it just the turnaround time has been fantastic and phenomenal. I give her a lot of credit, but. Mm-hmm. <sighs> episode 230 and we're we're still yeah. not hawk to yeah. talk to is is a tough name tough as in it's bad oh okay yeah that's that's very bad i think it follows the brand yeah but i also thought she didn't want to be remembered for that videos but now everyone's yeah i think she's doing a lot more stuff that's kind of avoiding yeah. that like she's not talking about spitting on that thing like i think she's doing a lot with animal shelters she is yeah. yeah people gave her a lot of hate uh, she threw out her first pitch at a Mets game like a month ago, <laughs> month and a half ago. Um, but she was raising like money for like an animal shelter. Yeah. So, um, yeah, t- uh, good for her. Jeff Bezos, if you're listening, get this up. <laughs> or uh, tell us brothers. Mark, Mark Cuban, Dave Portnoy. Uh, who else? Warren Buffett. <laughs> Warren Buffett. Is he, does he have a podcast? Oh, Joe, Joe Rogan. Joe. Warren yep. Buffett's just a lot of money. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Alex Cooper. Call her daddy. Daddy gang. Call her- Call her mommy. Yep. Um, yeah. Hit, hit us up. Yeah. Hit us up. We're open. Lastly, Matt. So I, I went on a cleaning spree. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Guess where that all spurred from? Uh, did something spill? No. Were you Nothing sick? Spilled. No. Uh, did something die in your house? No. I don't know. I, uh, I redid my this. Do what? I redid my desk. 
How many times <laughs> do you? I just I don't understand. Like what what is it? Every time you change, you're like, this is perfect. It's it's exactly what I need. And then three four months later, I hear, yeah, maybe like change this up a little bit. Like I don't I don't know. And then a month later, you're like, yep, I changed it. I changed it. What'd you do now? Uh, so I reverted it. How do I explain this? I, I would say in our time of podcasting, my desk setup has changed in this in this little time that it's changed. But originally, it was meant to be a one monitor, one laptop setup. So like there was like a little laptop riser. Do you do you remember that? Like it's kind of like floating. Yes, yeah. 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 So I have a let's just say like a USB C dock. And what I've started to realize there is another thing too, Matt. I changed everything so now i got a macbook pro (laughs) (laughs) um so i found that i have a uh, god this is gonna sound awful i will say everything was invested over amount of time this was not all one and done so i have a gaming laptop i now have a casual laptop and now i have a work laptop okay so So I have a lot of gizmos and gadgets, and I thought to myself, well, if this one mechanism or if this one piece of tech can cover all three of my laptops, then why don't I just set it up where anytime I want to work from a desk, I still have a two monitor setup by using the laptop screen, but then my nice big 144 hertz LG monitor. (laughs) But then as soon as I plug in the USB-C, regardless of what computer I use, all this stuff works. So like I can technically use this camera as a webcam for my MacBook and I can use it for my work laptop. I could use it for this, obviously, as we're podcasting um, the stream deck that I can use, the sound uh, uh, system, like the, the, the very cheap sound system that I use, like can use that for all three. Like it just it was all cohesive and it was all one unit. And I was like, you know what? I'm doing it. Whatever makes you happy, I yeah. guess. Uh, you know who you are, though? You're not going to get this reference. The, the co-workers probably will. Uh, you're Dwight Schrute, and he wants to make a desk. He wants to make a desk? He, a, a mega desk. Oh, he wants to make a mega desk. Mega desk. He, was, mega he desk wants to take everybody's work. desk and just make his <laughs> own like mega desk, desk. desk fortress. Yeah, that's that's what you are. <laughs> yeah. You actually, you should get like three of them and just like stack one on top desk. of the other two. And then that desk is the work. I've also never heard anyone in my life say they have a casual laptop. I didn't. I was. Fuck. <laughs> that one really got me. All right. <laughs> Again, whatever makes you happy. I use it for professional side things, but like all in all, like if I had to choose which laptop, like Pokemon, like which Pokemon would you choose? I choose the MacBook all day, every day. Yeah, uh, listen, my MacBook is knock on wood, still kicking for the past uh, uh, six years now. Yeah, yeah. congratulations! How long did it take you yeah, for the setup? Well, the cleaning, and, yeah, setup. Yeah, um, I, I would say like I I got home from church, did the the difference, and I think it was like I think I did it from like two till five. All right, that's not bad. Six, actually six. I lied. Six. No, five thirty. Five thirty. Two to five thirty. That's good. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I got. All right. That's down in the dumps. Yeah. Down in the dumps, but also up in, up in bumps. I don't know. Up in the bumps. Up in the bumps. Okay. Well, anywho, thank you so much for tuning in. Find all of our good stuff at beacons.ai slash funny business pod. Mr. Matthew. Ish. What is your advice for the coworkers, the good people of the funny business world? Well, everybody, it's that time of year. Uh, you know, time of the year that a lot of people put on a lot of weight. So that means it's time for a diet. I want all no. you to well well yeah why not no you don't want to be healthy I am healthy well maybe so so but maybe you don't have to go on a diet but let's just let's just watch our consumption like a lot of people gain this is time of year like you just sit home you drink some when the holidays come around you're drinking a lot uh, if your family's bunch of alcoholics like mine is but yeah just watch what you eat you know we're not going to be outside moving a lot so make sure you're like moving around. Uh, let's not let that weight creep up or that cholesterol get high. Uh, let's just take care of our bodies. You don't, you don't go running? Um, I, I'm not a runner. No. Not a track star? No. She's a runner. No. She's a track star. I did triple jump in high school. They call me Matt Speed for nothing. That's a fact. Even though I had no. 
relationship Facts. whatsoever. I, I, I went to go on a run. I probably said this a couple months ago when I did, like out of the blue, and then my calves were so sore. <laughs> I was like, that's enough of that. Oh, good grief. Well, most importantly, stay warm because that's getting the mornings now if you're living in Pennsylvania. Getting those mornings now where like it's freezing cold and it's warm in the afternoon. But don't get used to that because it will stay cold once we get into the later mm-hmm. months. Yeah, it, it did. I had to get up for work early yesterday to take April to work. Um, and it was like 40 degrees outside. And that was the worst yeah. way to start my day. Mm-hmm. Gosh. Well, stay warm, stay bundled, stay cozy. And until the next time, see you all in the next episode. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you.